I Lily Lily. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my August wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 10 books so I will be splitting this up into two different parts. This is part one with the first five books that I read for the month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read is Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. This follows Iris Grey who after a spell gone wrong is forced to leave her town and she starts to realize that she is hiding her true nature. She ends up working at her mother's wildlife refuge and she works with an intern named Pike Elder who she absolutely despises. When it comes to light that he doesn't like witches, she decides to use her grandmother's ancient ritual of a casting a spell but instead of casting it onto a person you cast it onto a bundle of herbs and then burn it to ashes. Only the spell goes awry when a little meddling owl swoops down and binds the curse to itself. And now Iris must work with the boy she cursed in order to save him as well as the town itself and it's like the story of that. I read Nature of Witches by this author last year I believe and I absolutely fell in love with Rachel Griffin's writing style. There's just something so comforting about it and this book was just filled with so many tropes that I love. The forced proximity and enemies to lovers drew me in instantly, not to mention that there's the only one tent trope, so I was definitely here for that. I really enjoyed the constant bickering and witty banter between Pike and Iris. I really liked watching them grow closer together as they spent more time with one another and I really like how they were both hiding pieces of themselves from each other and as they got to know each other better they revealed those pieces. I am a big fan of any book that features animals as companions so I really enjoyed Iris and her mom's connection with the animals and how that was an integral part of the story. I also just really loved that owl he was just a meddling little brat and I absolutely adored him. But yeah, overall, I think that this was a really fun read. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, we have The Favor by Nora Murphy. This is another one I gave 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Leah and McKenna, who live very similar lives, although they have never met. Recognizing the similarities between them, Leah begins to follow McKenna, wanting to help her in any way she can. And then a split decision one night entangles their lives together forever. This book flew by. I read it in two sittings. It has so much suspense right from the beginning that I couldn't put it down. I really like the alternating timelines. There was the past where we learned how each woman ended up in the place that they were married to the monsters that they now called their husbands and then the present where they're living in the nightmares that they call their lives. There's a huge trigger warning for domestic violence both psychological and physical as well as gaslighting that is a big factor in this book. I actually listened to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did a really great job with all three points of views. I will say that my biggest complaint was the detective point of view because he kept talking about his partner who was injured on the job. We never really got a backstory about why he was so invested in his partner's recovery. All we really got was him obsessing over her, saying how much he missed her and how much like he needed her to be there with him and it just was really creepy in my opinion. Like it just gave off really weird vibes and it didn't really feel necessary for the story so I'm not really sure why it was included. I just feel like his point of view could have been left out entirely and I would have enjoyed the story a lot more. But this definitely did not feel like a debut novel and I'm definitely intrigued to pick up more from this author whenever they put something new out. So yeah, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up is my girl Molly Likovich's new book, Riding the Headless Horseman. I am so in love with Molly's writing. I give everything that she writes like a 5 out of 5 stars because it's just so much fun fun. This follows Arletta who has grown up in Sleepy Hollows and she does not believe in death the way that others do. One Halloween night she is swooped away by the Headless Horseman into his realm and he is determined to make her his own. Like I said, I just love Molly's writing. At this point I will read anything that she puts out because it is just so fucking fun. I love how subtle she is with her humor and she always writes the most kick-ass female main characters and I just adore reading about them. Them. I will eat up anything Molly writes, so if you haven't read this book, definitely check it out. I'm gonna leave the link down below to her Amazon page where you can purchase the book yourself, but so much freaking fun. 
Next up, I have One For All by Lily Lanoff. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is a gender-bent retelling of The Three Musketeers that follows a chronically ill heroine who joins a secret sisterhood of sword-fighting women who uncover an assassination plot against the king. I really like Tanya as a main character. I like how she slowly came into herself and realized that she's not weak and unable to fight like the people around her made her feel. I also really like how she never let her illness get in the way of her hopes and dreams. I love how much people underestimated her and how much of a badass she was despite her disability. I really like the found family aspect of this and I really enjoyed watching Tanya grow closer relationships with all the girls in the academy. I thought that this was going to be a very high rating for me. In the first half of the book, I thought it was going to be five stars, and then it slowly lost steam for me as the story progressed. Like, I started this May 22nd, and I didn't finish it until August 29th. That's a big chunk of time, and I just lost interest and didn't really care, which is why I only gave it a 3.5 out of 5. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is actually a sequel to a book I read last year, and it is Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller. This is the second book in the Blades of Secrets duology. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This picks up right from the cliffhanger in book 1, and we are thrust back into the journey. I definitely liked this book a lot more than I did for book 1. I just felt that the characters were a lot more developed in this, and the plot was a lot Lot more interesting. There's more of a focus on the war and the politics in the various kingdoms in this book than there was in the first book, and I just think that that held my interest a lot more. I really loved seeing these characters again and watching them interact with one another. I wasn't the biggest fan of Ziva in the first book, but she has definitely grown on me in this second installment. Also, I loved how much Petrick came out of his shell in this one. We really got to see more of his personality, and I just thought he was so quirky and fun. I do think that Kellen is probably one of my favorite characters in the duology still as he was in the first book. I just think he is such a little sweet cinnamon roll and he's just so understanding and caring towards Ziva when she's anxious. I just think he's such a little sweetie pie. And then, of course, Tamra is my favorite character, except she played a very small role in this book, which was a little bit disappointing, but she's just such a highlight for me, and I'm really hoping that we get like a spin-off series where she's the main character because I just find her so fascinating. But yeah, I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was a lot of fun. Alright everybody, so those were the first 5 books that I read for the month of August. I will link part 2 down below once it is uploaded. You guys can check out the last 5 books that I read. Let me know down below what you read this month and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!